So I do remember feeling like, man, I'm just a phony, I'm a fake, how am I going to help people when I'm the one who still needs helping? But um, obviously you just push through that and you get over yourself and that's when I started doing, you know, personal training. When I started doing personal training, I spent quite a lot of time first like understanding weight training for myself and learning the techniques of proper weight training like deadlifts and squats and things like that and um, I really enjoyed that different stimulus because up till then most of my exercise had been more cardiovascular pilates weight weight based you know body weight based not proper weight training and so I enjoyed adding that to my bow my repertoire and I think I went a little handy guns on the weight training. I got too excited by that for a while and did that a little too much. And then after a few years of feeling like I'd forgotten my true love of dance and Pilates, I came back around and have a more balanced kind of workout week now. Now I'm definitely someone who will do weight training three or four times a week, sometimes not even that and I spend most of the other classes doing things like dance, Pilates, bar or gymnastics or something a bit more functional and I think that for me is perfect, that's the way I like to exercise. Got another plane, I'll just give this a moment. And in terms of my nutrition now, it's taken me a very long time but it's just been really gradual, like I'm, I was thinking about it and like I cook for myself now Three or four nights a week I often, because I'm still single, I'll cook on a Monday and that will have enough food for Tuesday and Wednesday or just Tuesday and then I'll cook on Wednesday and there'll be a double portion that'll keep me going for the next two days and I guess I've just slowly built up a, a few meals that I'm comfortable cooking. I'm still uh, not that confident when it comes to the kitchen and cooking and I don't love it. I won't lie to you, it's not something that I've come to love, but I've come to appreciate and understand that it is an act of self-love. Nourishing your body and eating well is actually one of the best things you can do for yourself and also just for your body composition and your health. And often my motivation comes to like, I want to work in the arts, so I've got to have my body in a certain way to get that work. And I know that's not the best motivation, but that is truly what motivates me and or, and obviously looking after my health I feel better when I eat better and I don't drink heaps of alcohol because I don't really like that feeling of having a headache or a hangover the next day so I think I eat quite a healthy diet now but it's still not the best <laughs> to be honest and I still have a sweet tooth but I'm always aware of my nutrition and I'm always trying to make tweaks and improvements but I think one of the best things that I allowed myself to acknowledge is that you are allowed treat food and for me to get over binging back when I used to binge I couldn't have food in the house that I would binge like I just couldn't do it but over years of kind of practice I was able to have little and often like what I started to do is I would buy a little Santee bar like one of those small chocolate bars out when I was out and I would eat that so I would have a little bit of chocolate every day so that I couldn't binge but I wouldn't have it in the house and then eventually now to the point where I can have a whole block of chocolate I can have ice cream in the freezer I can have brownies on the countertop and I can control myself there is self-control there because in my head I know I can eat it if I want to there's no no one saying you can't eat that I'm like no I can I actually can eat that if I want to eat that but I don't want to because I don't need to it's still going to be there tomorrow I'll eat it when I feel like it and I think removing that pressure of someone saying you can't eat bad food is the best thing you can do because to be honest no food is bad it's just all about eating in moderation. Some food is probably less beneficial to us, but 
you know, we, we can't demonize food and we can't tell ourselves that we are evil or we're going to get fat if we have a treat. It's just not real. Like you, you can eat 80% of the time healthy and 20% of the time not so healthy and your body's still going to function really well. And I just think that taking off the obsession of eating and what eat, what I was eating and focusing on my outward appearance, I had to do that. I had to get rid of those obsessive tendencies. And um, if I can ever feel myself becoming obsessed or controlled or, or feeling, you know, awful or negative around food, I just have to... I just have to stop doing that and I have to just enjoy what I'm eating. It's, I'm not really making sense, but hopefully someone understands me. So, yeah. So now my relationship with food, it's such a weird phrase, but it is a relationship. It's a relationship between food, exercise, ourselves and our bodies. Um, all of those relationships are really pretty good. I have a healthy level of confidence, my body is healthy, um, my mind is relatively healthy, yeah it's pretty healthy, you know, like the way I think is a lot more positive and I'm a lot more loving towards myself and it's just taken years and I couldn't even unpack how I did it, I know that a lot of it was um, through the help of friends, family, counselling, persistence, also faith, going to church, reading the Bible, um, unpacking a lot of negative, toxic thought patterns and rewiring re them with healthy ones. So yeah, now I'm at the point and this is, I'm at the stage now where I feel so healed and so centered and all of those things that I feel ready and able to share and coach other people, which is exciting. And I'm 28 now, so I'm, I've definitely waited until I, the things that I speak about or encourage people to do, they come from a very genuine and real place. And I think that's the other thing, the other reason why I'm so passionate about it and I wanted to start my own brand is I didn't want to be boxed into anyone else's ideologies or I didn't want to be boxed in to produce what I want to say in any way that I don't really truly, that doesn't truly resonate with me. And because I've been through such a terrible toxic journey, I didn't want to add into this industry and I didn't want to make someone else's journey worse by telling them to count calories or just throwing out another fad diet. Like, it's really not that. Like, the, the thing that I'm all about with me and my brand is creating a lifestyle that you can maintain for the rest of your life and making sure that we are looking at exercise and nutrition as a part of a holistic approach and if one thing is taking away your joy or it is um, robbing you of feeling um, peace then it's actually not worth it and it's it's not going to help you in the long run so yeah I think that's me I think that's my journey um, where I'm heading to in the future I don't know I just know that um, our bodies, they are gifts from God and we are given them and we need to look after them. Whether we, whether we do or not, that's, we're not going to escape our bodies, we're going to have to keep living in them. And I do think that we have a responsibility to look after our health, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones too. Because if we're in good health, then we will live longer and happier and we'll be better able to um, function in society so I think that we can't neglect our bodies and the fact that we have to understand health and well-being and I don't think that we should obsess over them or worship or idolize them I think that there's a real negative toxic culture especially in social media and especially with young women looking up to celebrities and fitness influencers thinking they have to change their bodies to fit a societal standard Things like um, having a big booty that's real popular at the moment, but you know, 
body trends have changed time and time again throughout the years so could have been popular to be hourglass or stick thin and you're just not going to keep up well, we're not going to keep up with society's changing societal standards so I just don't think it's worth it I think the best thing we can do is find exercise that we enjoy and something that's working our muscles our joints our heart our lungs and find an exercise pattern that works for our lifestyle that's going to be different for a mother that it is going to be for a young single woman so there's no pressure like you know I can't expect someone at a different age and stage to do the same thing as another person there's just no point in comparison I think um, that we should be eating healthily um, as much as little processed food as possible just back to basics you know eating carbs proteins fats let's not make things complicated it really isn't I think the hardest thing for most people is to have consistency and to have the motivation and I honestly think those are the two hardest things when it comes to having a healthy lifestyle because we have all the education we have all of the resources at our fingertips it's actually about our mind and about our will and I think those things are the things that take the longest to actually get into alignment but I think it's possible so I am all for sharing and giving the resources and that's why I've spent a long time developing my online app because I want to give all the resources I want to have the platform to speak I want to continue sharing and encouraging people and the reason why I've spent this long talking to you guys to the camera to share my journey is to finish on this that if I can do it I was genuinely so negative so stuck in such a horrible mindset if I can be free of it if I can find a way out if I can overcome an eating disorder and um, you know, I'm not saying I did that alone, I definitely didn't, but if, I, if I've done it, there is hope. If anyone who is listening to this is struggling with an eating disorder, or you're, you're really struggling with your self-worth, and you're finding the answer to your worth in places that are not helping you, I really want to encourage you that you are worthy as you are without changing anything. My belief is that I'm a child of God, so you are too. And that by being a child of God, that means that we are co or we are um, with Christ as a son, as a daughter, and we are like royalty when we're, we're in the royal family. So that means we're very worthy. Like it's like, imagine yourself as a king or a queen or a princess or a prince. Like you are incredibly worthy and you're incredibly precious life is precious and it's not to be taken for granted and um, we need to get free of the things that weigh us down mentally so that we can pursue what we need to in life you know our lives are short and they are numbered and we've got a lot to get on with in life so if you were like me and you were trapped in negative self-belief and negative thought patterns the first thing we need to do plain the first thing we need to do is to get our head on straight, get those thoughts changed, <laughs> take them captive and actually agree with the truth and that is that our lives have a purpose. We are created by God, we are not a mistake and um, we have a job here to do on this earth and um, yeah. I just encourage anyone who is going through a tough time with any of that, anything that you might have shared, like me, that you, you won't be stuck in it forever and you'll be free of that negativity, you'll be free of that, con that control, that con obsession and um, little by little you'll start to find your joy and find your purpose and reclaim your life back. So if I can do it, so can you i don't know exactly how and i don't know how long it will take but don't give up hope 
um, and don't give up on yourself. Yeah, okay. We're going to put this into two parts because that was a long conversation. Thanks for sticking with me, guys, and excited for all that is to come. And thank you for listening in. If you have listened to this far, you are a true OG fan or supporter. I don't like the word fan. <laughs> You're a true supporter. All right, guys, have a great day. And now you know a bit more about me and why I did, uh, why I've created this brand, why I'm so passionate about it. And I hope that we can keep improving and living a happy, healthy life together.